Welcome to Unity of Charlotte, where our mission is to nurture a deep and mature experience of God through the practice of unity principles. And that is a marvelous mission. Simply put, we are here to love, grow, and serve. I'm Reverend Pat Dre, and I'm so glad that you are here with us on Zoom or YouTube to be with us on this marvelous day. Let's start today by sharing our statement of oneness, and then that'll lead us into our prayer. There is one presence and one power in my life and universe, God the good omnipotence. And take a deep breath and release it. And notice that you are in a extraordinary spring day with the many, many shades of green that are life and life itself. And know that in the time of spring, and this time we call the Easter time, that it is a time of life growing abundantly around us and a reminder of what we are made of. And I say, as I always say, that there is joy in unity because the principle of unity means that I am one with all there is. I am one with life, with a capital L. And this means it's my springtime too. And in this beautiful day, I now release anything that disturbs me or sets me off balance. My body is still and centered. And I expand my awareness to the growing life around me, to the earth that my feet are planted on, to the sky that's so blue this morning, to the feeling of oneness with all that is. Spirit streams, pours, and shines through me restoring peace to my soul and blessings to the world. I am serene and I am in perfect harmony. And I know that in truth, all is well in my world and I am filled with gratitude. Nothing can disturb the calm peace of my soul it is a wash and the love of God. I am at ease in my body, and I allow grace into my life to make light anything I perceive as a burden. I am calm and poised. I release any worries, cares, or concerns, any self judgments, any perception that anything counts other than the life within me and the life that surrounds me. There is a place deep within me where all is still and all is quiet. And as I turn my thoughts from outer things, I find this still and I find this a quiet place. It is my refuge. It is my source of strength and faith and the place where I connect with God, where I feel my oneness with all that is. And from this place, I see only the truth. I am calm and confident. All is well with me. 
and I am at peace. And this is my only truth right now. As I get ready in this confident and peaceful place for a marvelous day to come. And I picture all the bright lights around me, this community that is the place where I belong and where all belong to me. And taking a breath and releasing it, I know that this is the reality that will carry me forward in the week to come. And join with me in knowing that this is our truth. And so it is. Amen. This week I was on spring break with my older grandchildren. And it was a joy. It was delightful. And one of the things that I observed yesterday was what they do at the coast for sand reclamation and to reclaim the dunes. And one of the things that was out there was a very tall, what they call a sand buggy. It's about as tall as a house on three stilts. It goes out into the ocean quite far. And there is a person up at the top that's sort of guiding the motor out. And it takes all the surveys to determine how the sand that is washed out to sea will be reclaimed. And I thought to myself, there was a brilliant idea in someone's mind that the dunes needed to be reclaimed and put back in the place where they once were, and that it makes the ecology better to do that, and it brings back life into the dunes, life of all kinds, and protects the land. And I thought to myself, thoughts are wonderful things. And somebody mastermind this dune buggy of an extraordinary sort to be able to figure out the science to reclaim the dunes. And I'm reminded of the unity principle that thoughts create experience and they lead to other thoughts and they lead to a better life, a better life for all, even the dunes. Thank you again for being with us this morning and welcome to those of you joining us on Zoom or YouTube. We're glad to have you and glad to have you as part of our conversation before our service today and staying with us afterwards for our marvelous uh, meeting. Welcome to the table, the welcome table. We're all are welcome. And this is facilitated by our very own wonderful facilitator, Horace Bush. So uh, do give yourself a wonderful treat and join us uh, after service. Um, we thank you for those of you joining us by YouTube. And uh, please subscribe and like, helping other people find us. If you or anyone you know is in need of prayer, please reach out to us. Uh, it is our joy to pray for you and your intentions. And you can also call Unity's telephone prayer line, Silent Unity at 1-800-NOW-PRAY uh, for a personal affirmative prayer. Our announcements are the book club meets next week. Uh, and uh, that is on the 18th of April. And our Course in Miracles meets every Thursday morning at 9.30 via Zoom. The Unity Men's Group has two meetings. One is virtual on Wednesdays evenings at, from 7 to 8.30, on the first and third Wednesdays. And then on the second and fourth Wednesdays at 9.30 to 11 in person. So join the Men's Group discussions. 
Our affirmative prayer and meditation group meets on Tuesday evenings at 7.15 to 8 p.m. for a wonderful meditative experience and prayerful energy for the church, the city, and the world facilitated by Barbara Rolf. Dialogue as Service meets on Wednesdays from 1 to 2.30 p.m. via Zoom. And I believe those are all of our current meetings that we are having. Reverend Jim Fuller is with us this week for an Easter message. And we can use yet an additional inspiring Easter message. So thank you for being with us, Reverend Jim. Over thank to you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see, let me flip this back till I get the view where I want. There, find myself. And voila. So good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good to see lots of people here today. 25, 25 people logged in already. That is wonderful. That is wonderful. Well, I'm going to start us off with an affirmation for April. I'll invite you to read this along with me. Together we read, today I am reborn to my timeless self. Trusting in my creator, I renounce my belief in loss and death. I step past my self-created fears and claim my true life. I am spirit, eternal and unlimited. Today, I am reborn to my timeless self. Well, before we move in or as we prepare to move into our time of meditation, I'll share just a little bit of, of music with you. And let me get this set. My soul go deeper, my soul go deeper into my God. When I pray, I feel my soul go deeper, my soul go deeper into my God. Right here. Right here, right now, right where 
we'll pause that share and just close our eyes. Feel that breath of life that's flowing through you right now. Life itself, complete and full, moving in and through you, through mind, through body, through being. When we quiet, when we go into that sacred place inside, we once again renew and rekindle our connection with our creator, with our source, with that place that we live from throughout time. So we breathe and we let the bodies relax and we let the thinking mind just take a little break. Because behind these physical forms, behind these streams of thought, there is that, that which is our source, that which we are part of, that which is life itself, living us. Let's take a few moments and just rest in the silence, in that presence, as that presence. Continuing, we might remember the words of Jesus, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. He could as have easily said, I am in the Mother, and the Mother is in me. I am in the divine creator, and the divine creator is alive in me me. Breathe into that. And know that this is not just true for we who are gathered here this morning, but for every living thing everywhere. Every living thing everywhere. So may we send a, a quiet thought of blessing, a quiet thought of blessing to those many living things around us and to ourselves, to our friends and loved ones and our neighbors and, and to those we've yet to meet. A thought of blessing, an extension of love, from the point of the creator in our hearts to the point of the creator in theirs.
and knowing ourselves as blessed right now. May we conclude by simply saying together, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Right here, right now, right where I am, I pray. When I pray, I feel my heart go deeper, my heart. Hi, it's Dr. Mark. <laughs> uh, yes, the joy of screen sharing off of YouTube. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And I, I send great thanks out to Daniel for sharing with us as he does. Let's see if I can. Um... There, that's, I guess, a little better. We'll see. Well, this morning I'm going to start with a reading from something that happened after, just after Easter, right after Easter, actually, um, from the Gospel of John. We read that Mary Magdalene stood outside Jesus's tomb weeping, and as she wept, she bent over and looked in the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been laying, one at the head and one at the feet. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, they've taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they've laid him. And when she'd said this, she turned around, and she saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't recognize him. And he said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? And thinking him to be a caretaker, she said to him, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. And then Jesus says to her, Mary, and she turns and says to him in Hebrew, Rabbi. And Jesus says, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go and tell my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went and told the disciples, I've seen the Lord. And she told them the things he had said. Well, according to the Gospel of John, Mary Magdalene was the first to find the empty tomb the first to encounter the risen Christ, and the first to tell the others what had happened. As the gospel writers describe the story, it must have been a very powerful and mystical experience. But that was a week ago. My question for us now is, you know, well, what did Mary do the following morning or the following day? What did she do the following week? Certainly, she took time out for her morning prayers, probably hoping to encounter the presence of Jesus once again. And after that, well, she would have drawn the day's water and ground meal for the day's bread and continued with her daily tasks. My topic for today is after Easter, or, you know, maybe more appropriately, because Jesus and all of his friends were all Jews, perhaps the... Uh, topic should actually be after the Passover resurrection. We'll call it after Easter because that's how we're used to thinking of it. There's a saying in the East that, you know, before enlightenment, you chop wood and carry water. And after enlightenment, you chop wood and carry water. Nowadays, we understand that our Bible stories, including our Easter stories, are, for the most part, non-historical. They were created decades later, not by the disciples themselves, but by followers of followers of Jesus. Most of the situations described in them can be found elsewhere in the Old Testament. 
many of the words heard in our Easter stories, along with some of the things included, appear to have been borrowed from earlier Old Testament writings like Zechariah and Joshua and Kings. But it's important to remember that for the people of Jesus' time, that wasn't the Old Testament. That was their sacred scriptures, their current scriptures. Just like we, you and I will reflect back on things we know, familiar teachings and stories, when we encounter something new and unusual, the writers of the Gospels, the stories of Jesus, relied on their familiar scriptures to make sense of the teachings and the events that had taken place, what they'd heard about in Jesus's life, including our Easter stories. Now, just because the stories are not literal history doesn't mean they can't be helpful for us today. They bring some interesting questions like, what do we do when things go miraculously right or terribly disturbingly wrong? What do we do when life moves in unexpected and often uncomfortable, uncontrollable directions? That's the question that comes up. Well, one of my favorite authors and workshop leaders is a man named Jack Kornfield. Um, he's a clinical psychologist and also a, a Buddhist meditation teacher of sorts. Um, Jack likes to joke that his early life was interesting enough that when he finished college, he headed off to Cambodia and lived in the jungle for three years to kind of sort himself out. Uh, there he studied at a Buddhist monetary with, monastery with a teacher named Ajahn Chah. He learned new ways to relate to the sacred. Jack had been raised a Jewish in New York, uh, but he needed a different way to relate to the divine. So he did some lengthy meditations, he had some powerful experiences, and he also realized, I think his teacher helped him realize, that he had to come back and integrate the many things that he had learned and experienced so he could live them. That took some time and eventually led to his life work of becoming first off a clinical psychologist and second, developing his practice as a spiritual teacher. He's uh, best known for his Spirit Rock Retreat Center out on the West Coast. His books include probably the first one some people have read, A Path with Heart. It was a gift from a friend of mine. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, he also had a follow-up book to that called Wise Heart. And more appropriate for today's talk, he had a book that came out not too long ago called After the Ecstasy, The Laundry after the ecstasy, the laundry. Before the mystical experience, before the powerful teacher, before the Easter morning, we chop wood and carry water. We work, we buy food, we take care of friends and family, we do the laundry. And after the experience, well, a lot more of the same. A lot of people think if they find just the right teacher, just the right church, just the right teaching, have a strong enough spiritual experience and their life will just somehow miraculously turn around and they won't have to deal with daily life on the planet anymore. Maybe that happens for a few people. I haven't met them or heard of them. For most people, the powerful meditation, the deeply healing experience, even the mystical Easter moment is simply one more step in the unfolding of a spiritual journey that continues. The good news, as, as I've experienced it, is that with each experience and with each learning, the pathway of our life becomes just a little easier to discern, just a little easier to discern. And perhaps the ups and downs of living don't feel quite so difficult. They're a little easier to navigate, or at least less threatening. But one mystical experience, a few mystical experiences, no matter how seemingly profound, do not mean that we have arrived. After Easter, we each still have work to do, work to do. I would hope and imagine that Jesus' followers were familiar with that fact. They probably all received some pretty amazing and eye-opening teachings for them. 
and experienced some pretty amazing things happening. Yet each day they had to do their equivalent of chopping wood and carrying water, which included attending to their ongoing daily prayer and spiritual practices. After Easter, after leaving Jerusalem, probably fleeing for their lives, they returned to those activities. John's Easter story gives us one experience of them encountering Jesus afterwards. It talks about by the Sea of Galilee with Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, the James and John and two other disciples. And Simon Peter says, I'm going fishing. And they said, we'll go with you. And they got into the boat, but all night long, they caught nothing. And just after daybreak, they, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples didn't recognize him. And Jesus said, children, you don't have any fish, do you? And they answered, no. And he said, cast your net on the right side of the boat. You'll find some. So they cast their net and they weren't able to haul it in because there were so many fish. One of the stories of, of the fishermen, of part of Jesus's followers experiencing him. The story makes it as though he experienced him physically. Maybe it was simply spiritually, I don't know. But they did continue to remember and experience him. Weeks, months, years later, some people continue to experience Jesus. Jesus' work when the body was done, but the disciples, the followers, our work continues. My understanding of the person of Jesus is this, that at some point in his ordinary life, probably during his time with the man we know as John the Baptist or John the Baptizer, he became so God-connected, so spiritual-connected, that when people met him, they didn't really notice the man. They didn't notice the charming person. They didn't notice the personality or even the prophet. What they noticed was that radiance, that presence that shone through him. What Unity co-founders Charles and Myrtle Fillmore would refer to as the Christ within, the Christ within the man Jesus. Of course, they remind us that that same presence is there to radiate through us if we allow it. I've met a couple people who'd lived in the presence of highly evolved spiritual teachers, teachers in whom that radiance or that presence, that divine nature was strikingly apparent. Each credits their teacher with helping them find a deep and powerful spiritual connection. The two I know personally both had experienced a great sense of loss when their teacher passed on, left the physical body. For some people I know, the teachers were a primary link or a doorway to spirit or God. Therefore, when the teacher passed, they experienced both a loss of a teacher, maybe a dear friend, and also a, a loss of the connection with God, their doorway. Some speak of still feeling the teacher very, very present with them, like the followers of Jesus may have. Others struggle to make that non-physical connection. I want you to think of that in terms of Jesus and his followers, the ones that were left after Easter. How did they handle it? What did they do? How did they experience life? Working with a teacher, teachers, or good teachings can help us build a foundation for creating a good connection with God and spirit for ourselves. It can help us build up some experiences and those help us build up faith and trust so that we can have a more lasting God connection. But one of the things that these friends have taught me and I've learned is you can't ride on the coattails on the connections of others forever. And that's why it's so important for us to work together and individually on developing our prayer practice, our spiritual practices. We all understand that if we want to learn to do music, to play music well, or perform music, we have to practice. We have to practice whether we want to play an instrument or whether we want to sing. We need regular practice if we want to be able to do that. The same if we want to be able to do something like run or swim or play tennis or bowl or crochet or cook. All practice is at its core basically some focused mental attention 
often paired with some physical activity, and then repeated over and over, over time. Spiritual practice, I would say, would be focused mental attention along with an intention to spiritually connect. Mental attention paired with a spiritual intention to connect, repeated over months and years. It produces changes that we wouldn't have expected when we first started off. And as we go farther along, we realize there's even more possibilities for us than whatever we happen to have achieved at this point. It's also interesting to notice that, you know, some days, some weeks, it seems relatively easy to do our practices, to do our meditations and prayers. Other times, sometimes for long periods of time, it seems like we simply can't get focused, like the mind is wandering, like we're going nowhere. And still, if we're wise, we continue to practice. Because again, the musicians will tell you, it takes many, many years to become familiar enough both with the instrument and the musical repertoire so that the music seems to flow effortlessly, so that the presence and the spirit seems to flow effortlessly. My point for today is this. Before Easter, Jesus' followers had to chop wood and carry water. In their case, literally. They had to manage the activities of their daily lives. And each also had to do his or her individual spiritual work. After Easter, after an experience that maybe was for some a great miracle, but probably for most a devastating loss, the spiritual work and the spiritual practice had to continue, had to continue. Another favorite workshop leader of mine is a man known as Krishna Das. He leads um, musical workshops using chanting as a chanting prayers as a format for moving deeply into meditation. At the end of his workshops, he has a little closing prayer he shares. It goes like this. If we know anything about a path at all, a spiritual path that is, if we know anything about a path at all, it's only because of the great ones who have gone before us. Out of their love and kindness, they've left some footprints for us to follow. So in the same way that they wish for us, we wish that all beings everywhere, including ourselves, might be happy, might be safe, might have good health and enough to eat. And may we all live at ease of heart with whatever comes to us in life. I believe that just like Jesus, we all eventually will find and follow our own pathway to what we currently call God or heaven. We follow the footprints left by Jesus, left by others, understanding that as we take each step, as we do our part, the next steps will make themselves known to us. Along the way, we can share and appreciate the love and the support of our spiritual friends, our church community, our, our friends who join with us in prayer and study. Friends here, as well as others that we may have not yet seen, may not even be visible to us in this world. Our work after Easter is to build and strengthen our practice for pointing our attention and setting our intention on spirit, on God. Pointing our attention and setting our intention on connecting with spirit, with God. I realized that's actually the way we chop sacred wood and carry spiritual water, the water that nurtures and grows our soul. Well, as usual, I have a affirmation for us for the lesson. Have to move forward to that. Here we go. The affirmation for this lesson is my prayers, my intentions, and my daily practice are my pathway to heaven and God. 
Say that with me. My prayers, my intentions, and my daily practice are my pathway to heaven and God. One more time. My prayers, my intentions, and my daily practice are my pathway to heaven and God. Close your eyes and let that settle in. We all think that something is going to happen from outside us to bring heaven, to bring God in. Truth is, heaven and God haven't gone anywhere. Always right here. But my prayers, your prayers, my intentions, your intentions, my daily practice, those are the pathways. Those are the pathways. And as we follow the footsteps left for us by Jesus and by the other great ones who have gone before, as we follow those footsteps, following in prayer and intention and in practice, we find ourselves moving down the road toward that place where we have always been or we have never left. The heaven that is right where we are. The God that abides right where we are now. That's the mystical Easter experience. It can happen anytime. So I'll invite you to open your eyes and share that with me again one more time. Together we say, my prayers, my intentions, and my daily practice are my pathway to heaven and to God. Well, that's my thoughts for us after Easter as we continue to chop wood and carry water, move down the path of our spiritual life as well as our physical life. I hope you'll take advantage of the opportunities that Unity of Charlotte offers, join together in prayer to work with others and support others and support yourself in this, in this ongoing work that we do individually and also collectively. Well, as we move forward in our order of service, I'll remind us that it's time right now to think about supporting Unity of Charlotte. This ministry exists and continues on because of your tithes and your offerings. You can mail your tithes and offerings to Unity of Charlotte at 401 East Arrowwood Road, Charlotte 28217. Or the easy way, the way I tend to use, is you can hop on your phone even, or your computer, go to unityofcharlotte.org, go to the website and click on the donate button. And just quietly decide, ask the universe, what is my tithe? What is my offering? What is my gift? It's often an interesting answer. It moves one way to move forward in our practice of prayer, to inwardly ask what we are asked to give, what we are asked to do how we are asked to support this group that supports us, this group that is comprised of us. So as we prepare to do that, I'll just invite you to feel a sense of gratitude and appreciation for Unity of Charlotte and to join me as we read together our prosperity blessing. Together we say, joyously, I give this gift knowing the divine presence blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. Well, I will thank you for being here with us this week. I'll invite you to stay with us for the discussion that's going to be coming up after this service. Um, I'll also invite you to join with me as we prepare to do our closing statement and to click back in and, uh, and join us again later. And to those of you who are joining us on YouTube, thank you very much for being with us today. We love and appreciate your presence too.
There we go. All right. And let's share together our prayer of protection. Together we say, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. And so it is. Thank you and have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week. And hang on on the call, on the service, if you're joining us for the program afterwards. It'll be starting in just a few moments.